It's time for another 3D printer race. Last time we did this, we were comparing Prusa printers, the MK2 versus the MK3. But that really wasn't much of a speed test, as it was comparing the settings that they give you to use on both of those machines from the slicer and seeing how things panned out. Now, why would you go head to head with 3D printers like this anyway? Well, mostly I think it's fun and I find the results very interesting. And these two machines are no exception given the architecture, the price point, and their build volume. These are probably two of the most common entry-level 3D printers that users will buy. And I even read somewhere that the Model Price Select Mini was the best-selling 3D printer of all time. So now let's get a close-up of what we're working with here. In this corner, we have the Model Price Mini Delta, with a 110 by 120 millimeter build volume, Weighing in at just four pounds, it also offers auto calibration, which is very handy when you're using a Delta printer. And in this corner, we have the Model Price Select Mini version 2. It has a 120 millimeter cubed build volume, and it weighs in at a beefy 9.9 .9 pounds. It does have a manually leveled bed. All in all, these machines are pretty similar. They have the same main board, hot end, and extruder setup, I'm even using the same spool of filament for both tests. The biggest difference being the architecture, the Delta versus the Cartesian. Now the settings in the firmware are going to be different, giving these two configurations. But I am going to use the exact same G-code for both machines. So let's check out the software and the G-code now. So on the left we have our Mini Delta, and on the right we have our Select Mini. The print and filament settings for these are identical. So if we head into printer settings on both machines, so the bed sizes are going to be pretty much the same. One is round, one is rectangle. In custom G-code, really the only difference is going to be this G29 on the Delta. It will run an auto-leveling sequence before the print starts, but that shouldn't impact this test too much. And then the extruder settings for both sides, all of the retraction and Z-lift settings are going to be identical. Nothing has changed in between these two machines. And back to print settings on both of these, we'll just head into speed. Note the fastest speed for the infill is going to be 60 millimeters a second. Again, everything is exactly the same. Something interesting to address about the differences in between this hardware. If you take a look at the output of an M503 command for both of these machines, we have the Cartesian on the left and the Delta on the right, you're going to see a lot of differences here. First, we note max acceleration. This is to be expected because everything on the delta, it's all going to have to be the same for X, Y, and Z for it to work. The Z is 20 on the Cartesian. But the printing retract and travel accelerations, this is what's really going to affect the printing speed. So we notice on the Cartesian, printing and travel, the acceleration is only 800. On the delta, they're all set to 3000. And now's a good time to tell you that these are all factory defaults for these machines. I haven't made any changes. This is how they come out of the box. And the last note on this information that I wanted to give you is check out the extruder feed rate. It's set to 50 for both sides. And this is good for any 3D printer. This is the maximum feed rate that your extruder can extrude or retract. And this is important to note when you're tuning your retraction. So if we take a look in the slicer, when you're tuning your extruder settings to make sure retraction is just right and you're adjusting the retraction speed, note that you can never go over that default feed rate unless you go into the firmware and tune it. So if you're tuning retraction trying to get rid of something you don't like, make sure the retraction speed in your firmware isn't limiting you when you're tuning in the slicer. As always, don't get too carried away with any setting. Go in slow increments. So we've seen the G-code is pretty much the same, and the acceleration is a lot higher on the Delta than it is on the Cartesian. But that's to be expected, because that's kind of the whole point of a Delta. There's less inertia when you stop and start in the Delta configuration, so you should be able to execute those print moves a lot faster on the Delta configuration. But will you sacrifice print quality? Well, that's what we're getting ready to find out. So both the G-codes have been loaded on the SD cards. Now all we have to do is hit print. Ready? Go. So both printers have started and they're doing their thing. The Select Mini is about two layers ahead of the Delta, but I think we're going to see the Delta catch up here pretty quick. Let's take it to the time lapse. So 
we're about halfway on the Delta printer, and we're about a third of the way down on the Cartesian printer. So even though the Delta got a late start, it's still going to take the lead. So we'll see how it goes. Back to the time lapse. The Delta was able to complete the Vinci in about an hour and 21 minutes. The Cartesian is just a little over halfway. So let's keep going. a whopping 2 hours and 25 minutes, the Cartesian machine is finally done. But how do the Benchies look? Let's check them out. What do you think? Which one do you think is better? In my opinion, at less than half the print time, I think the Delta still had a better print quality than the Cartesian. Now I'm sure you could tune both these machines in the firmware and in the slicer to achieve a faster print speed and a better print quality, but remember this was stock firmware settings on these two out of the box and a middle of the road slicer setting. So I hope this gave you a better idea about these two machines and the settings that you're going to see specific to a Delta or a Cartesian. I think that both these machines are well worth the money, especially the Delta given its extra speed and it's the cheaper option of the two. I hope you found this video entertaining or at least interesting. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.